we went into town. It's very, very small, Abrams Bay. There's an old Air Force dock that you can tie up to in a dinghy. It's about a mile's walk into town on a little old road. At the crossroads, you turn left and the grocery store is down to the left. The current cruising guides and the current information on the web about my iguana is incorrect, it's outdated, and it's just wrong. So you'll see stuff about Lorraine's, that's closed. You'll see stuff about Reggie's. Uh, Reggie has decided to become a minister. And so his store restaurant is open when he's here, but oftentimes he's not. In fact, he's up in Nassau right now and we don't know when he'll be. Um, oftentimes there's a phone number uh, over the door and if you want to come in, you have to call on the phone and then they come from their house and they open the door. Some... So when we got yeah. to the grocery store here in town, that store, Clydina lives right next door and if she's not at the store, you have to go knock on her door and ask her to open the store up. One of the men across the street saw us knocking on the door and he hollered across the road, Clydina, somebody's coming to your store. It's very, very small. The people are very nice. Everyone has been so kind to us. And we had somebody give us a papaya. There's, there's dilly fruit. We're probably gonna go on Saturday and collect a bunch of dilly fruit. They don't even sell it, it just grows wild. This is the type of off the beaten path place that we like. This is very, very remote. It's sort of the last outpost. Oh, it says in the cruising guide, you can check in here. There's nobody here. You can't check in here. There used to be a remote guy. Yeah, there used to be somebody that came up from uh, Great Inagua uh, to once check in a people while in. to check people in, but he doesn't do that anymore, I guess. We were told that's, uh, yeah, that didn't happen. This is definitely an off the beaten path place, and the beaches are absolutely pristine. There's like no footprints, no tourists, nobody here, right? If you want an absolutely pristine location, this is it. Apparently in it's December wonderful. there's more people. There's yes. a Christmas event in December we were told that there's the a local Christmas host. event in December and you can see by the dock there's all kinds of painted tables and the and the palm trees are painted. It's very pretty. And you can tell that they have a festival here. You can get water at the not quite at the dock. There's a <laughs> spigot behind the bathrooms. And the bathrooms are right by the dock. So if you get off on the old Air Force dock and you just walk up the road just, oh, I don't know, 50 yards, 25 maybe even. There's, uh, there's bathrooms, and behind the bathrooms is a reverse osmosis water. Uh, the locals don't drink it. They still drink from their wells and cisterns and rainwater. You can get that water too. If you feel if you so inclined, center. you can fill jerry cans with that as well. Um, the reverse osmosis water was fine. Uh, we ran it through a filter before we used it, but... Um, I don't see anything wrong with it. Apparently, a lot of the other boaters have been using it as well. Uh, we met several really cool boaters here. That um, One of them has been here for the last four years, coming and going. He goes fishing with the locals. Um, it was cool to talk to him a little bit about the, what's happened to the area and the changes in the town and things like that, a little bit of local history. The petroleum facility is on the other end of the island, and it's, uh, it's a long way there. But we're told that you can get diesel there. I haven't tried it. I don't know if we will try it. That is the longest reef. Oh. And it's a little bit far, so but you still can see the, the water splashing over it. And right. In a line from here to there, you know, and then there'll be a break in the line, but that's a long reef. That reef runs probably about five miles. And it's just as straight as an arrow on the outside edge of Abrams Bay here. And there's a break in it back up that way, uh, right on the southern tip. That's the southern entrance. That's the southern entrance. And there's a break in it at the western entrance. And you can see the breakers the whole way along. So if you want to know where to come in, look for where there's no breakers. I just thought that that's incredible, the length of that reef. And it it's is. not <clears throat> zigzag or here and there and gone, and then appears again. It's a line. It just goes like you even estimated at five miles. The reef, however, we were told by somebody who just went out there diving, um, is pretty much dying. He said it's not very nice. Uh, we were expecting a spectacular reef and maybe to do some snorkeling out there. And he said it's not that nice. There's nothing there. The coral is dying. Oh, shucks. And his girlfriend is she's some kind of marine biologist i think or something like that i'm not sure exactly 
but she knows a lot about coral. And she says that um, what's going on with the coral reefs is not just the hot water. That's something that causes a very slow deterioration, but that there's actually a bacteria that's killing the coral. The, apparently they first found the bacteria in Florida, but now it's spread to the Turks and Caicos. It's obviously spread here and other places in the Bahamas that um, the reefs are just dying from this bacteria. And apparently it's killing something like five centimeters of reef a day when they're infected. So I think the bacteria, as I understand it, I think the bacteria likes the hot water. So the heat of the water does improve this bacteria's life cycle, I guess. It's really the bacteria that's killing them. So if you were coming out here to find a beautiful, pristine reef, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It looks like the reef is not what it used to be. We asked about a restaurant and uh, they actually gave us the name of a woman that lives down the street in the White House on the left. And said, if you want real Bahamian food, go to her. Like a lot of places, it's not like a restaurant where you walk in, you call them, you make an order, and then you can come in and eat that evening if they know ahead of time. So I think it's a similar way, but I guess she probably just uh, opens her house up. We asked one of the locals about it, and he said, yeah, go to her place. She, gives, she has really good food. And maybe she's a restaurant, maybe she's not. We didn't, we didn't go and check yet. That's it's important. really hot, and I mean hot. It's... Um, it is very different. The farther south you get, remember, the sun is more directly overhead. Yes, but and this so... is when it's seemingly hit harder than usual, though, because we were up just a tiny bit north, and it wasn't this bad. But... We crossed some kind of a line somewhere, and it, it changed. We didn't drink enough water on the trip down. That didn't help. That didn't help. But by the time Sam and I got here, we were wasted. It was just one overnight trip. It was just almost exactly 24 hours and we were just gone and we're still recovering and yesterday we went out in the heat Locked and I mean the air's cool and there's a nice breeze and it's it's wonderfully but pleasant. the sun but the sun is just blistering <laughs> and the nights are fabulous that's the point is it's really not the air temperature it's just the sun beating on you directly looking forward it looks like we're going to be here probably till Tuesday I've been spending a lot of time with the grib files trying to find when the weather is going to be right for a crossing to the Dominican Republic and we've been trying to follow the recommendations of a gentleman's guide to passages south I've mentioned that book before um, but this weather window is not quite long enough so there's two options one we can go around the north side of the Turks and Caicos and then turn south along the eastern edge. Or two, we can go south from here and then go on the underside of the Turks and Caicos, head east, and then turn south to Dominican Republic. Either way, it's, um, it's going to depend on the weather window, really. One of the things it mentions in A Gentleman's Guide to Passages South is that it's tempting to go from my iguana directly at an angle straight down to, but the wind is never quite far enough north. And so you don't want to attempt that passage, he says, unless the winds are north of 45 degrees true. Because otherwise, with the current and the winds coming off of the Dominican Republic, you can't actually make that and you end up having to turn south. We could turn south right now, except that if we turned south and we used the winds and, and landed on um, the northern edge, we would hit Haiti. That's not bad. Haiti's okay, except for right now. As it happens right now, Haiti is in the midst of a virtual civil war. It's really sad what's going on there. It's, it's bad. I feel terrible for the people there. I know the U.S. has sent some military there to try and help them out. I don't know that that's going to help. We're going to try and stay as far away from Haiti as possible. That's another reason we might have to go around the north end of Turks and Caicos. If you like the video you've just seen and you would like to see more, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. We don't have... Oh, crap. Cut that. This is definitely an off-the-beaten-path pace. There is a spigot behind the gas. Excuse me. Anyway, I think yeah. that's it. That's it for now.